Welcome to What's Going On, the weekly podcast and video cast of First United Methodist Church in Yankton, South Dakota. Hi, and welcome to this week's episode of What's Going On. I'm Pastor Katie here at First United Methodist in Yankton, South Dakota, and I'm glad you could join me for this episode. One thing that this episode isn't going to be, normally I tell you what it is, is a recap of annual conference. Uh, We are going to be doing a recap as we've done in the past, but as we've done in the past, I would like to have the recap include the voices of all of the delegates from our church who attended annual conference. And we'd like to be able to give them a little time to process kind of what they've experienced. Annual conference is a bit of a whirlwind. Um, in and that the schedule is very full and tight and we accomplish a lot of things and so giving them a little time to process and see what floats to the top as well as just getting schedules coordinated to get that recorded so be looking uh, out for that episode that'll be coming out in the next uh, few weeks so that is not what we're going to talk about today. Instead, what I'd like to dig into a little bit is the reasoning behind the sermon series that we have been doing for the month of June, which is our hashtag BUMC sermon series. Um, this is a series that I've been floating in my mind, but I wanted to wait to do it until I knew for sure that the church would remain United Methodist and that we weren't going to be going down a disaffiliation track, which uh, would have been very heartbreaking for me, um, as I am a United Methodist pastor, and that is where my commitment is and where my heart is. Uh, And so it's very exciting for me to get to share this in this way. Um, But I also want to talk about some of the reasons why I felt it was important If you listen to the first sermon and kind of in the first sermon, I did a little bit of an introduction to the series and part of the reason that I felt it was appropriate for us to talk about um, our tradition and our heritage as United Methodist is because uh, our name has been dragged through the mud a little bit uh, by people who... um, who have left the church and by people who've never been a part of our church and and have been hearing uh, things about us as a denomination, as a church that just are unfair and untrue. And I think that can it can be very easy to kind of get down about that, that, that um, the narrative that is out there about who we are is not an accurate narrative. And so for me, I felt that it was important for me to be able to stand up as your pastor, but also as someone who's very proud to be in the tradition that I am, that it's one that I chose and I chose over other traditions. Um, It's not as though I uh, grew up in the United Methodist Church and it's all I've ever known. That's not the case. It's also not the case that this is, uh, you know, I was in one church and I'm in this church. End of story. I have actually spent time in a variety of different kinds of churches um, and really found my home here. Um, And so for me, it, it felt important that we claim who we are and we claim what makes us great and what uh, what we bring to the table and, and the things that we do incredibly well um, and, and to be able to celebrate that and to own it and to say, um, you may believe that about me, but that's not who I am. This is who I am. This is what we believe and this is what we care about and this is who we're going to be as a church. Um, and so that's what kind of brought me on the journey of of wanting to preach this series. Now, this is a series that I'm uh, that uh, people have put together in the kind of greater United Methodist Church. One of the beautiful blessings that we have as a connectional church is that we can share resources uh, from church to church, conference to conference, things like that. Uh, but I've been also supplementing that material with this book. This book is called Three Simple Rules, A Wesleyan Way of Living by Reuben P. Job. I misspoke on um, the first week in saying that he was a bishop here. He wasn't a bishop here. He's from the Dakotas. Uh, so I think actually even better. But um, I've, I've just been uh, really proud. And I think there's so much that our tradition has to offer. Um, 
And I want us all to feel proud of, of our United Methodist heritage and our United Methodist identity. Because I think that's what is going to shift the narrative is not that, um, not, not what's going on out there, not what people say we are, but who we say we are. We're the ones who know. We're the ones who are here and committed and doing the work that God has called us to do. And I'm so proud of that. You know, last month we highlighted all these incredible missions and ministries that we do in the life of the church through our um, volunteer appreciation week. And I just remember feeling incredibly proud of this church and the things that we've done. I've also heard narrative around, um, you know, well, our church just really got hit and, and we really, um, COVID hit us really hard and, you know, maybe we didn't make all the right choices and, you know, if only we had done this, if only we had done that, if only whatever. Um, one, that kind of talk is not actually all that helpful because we can't go back in time and change what happened. What happened is what happened. But from my vantage point, which granted is a very different vantage point because I came to this church in the middle of COVID. Um, and I don't have an experience of this church prior to it. Um, but from my vantage point, I feel like we did a wonderful job of doing the best we could at making the best choices we could make with the information we had available to us. Listening to the voices of those who were the most likely to be experts. Uh, so we really paid attention to our medical professionals in our church, which we're blessed to have many. And we followed the guidelines as best uh, that anyone knew at that time. Uh, and we really were guided, honestly, by our three simple rules, in particular, our first rule of doing no harm. And we really felt that uh, at the time with the information that we had, that gathering could do significant harm to the, the those of us in our midst who were very uh, susceptible to the more... Um, extreme symptoms that COVID could sometimes bring on in people. And, and we really didn't want to jeopardize people just so that they could gather um, when we knew that there were other ways for us to be the church. And so I know for some, that was a really disappointing decision. It's not what the decision that you would have made, but I hope that you understand um, the logic that we were following during that time. I think another piece that is really maybe overlooked in all of this, and in, in particular in how all of that affected our church, is um, the combination of a few events that happened in quick succession. We had the COVID pandemic start. Just a few short months later, uh, Reverend Ron retired. Um, during the pandemic, and that was really hard. I know that was a really hard thing for him, um, not getting to really have that closure with all of you, and I know for all of you that was a really hard thing to feel like you really didn't get to say goodbye in the way that's, that you wanted to. And then also uh, we we lost um, our associate pastor that was gonna hopefully be some of the glue of the transition time. Uh, and so we lost that. And then also um, in, in the resigning of, of the praise team director and, and that sort of um, dissipating as well. It was a lot of change in a very short amount of time in the midst of a very stressful season for the entire world. Um, so we could focus on all of that. I think it's helpful for us to understand some of that, that um, those are, any one of those things could have caused a real stress point in the life of the church. We had all of them at the same time, basically. Um, and that that's a real challenge. 
And you had to walk that challenge with a new pastor, with someone that you didn't really know, and someone who didn't know you. For, for the first few months of my time here, I only knew your eyes. <laughs> and so uh, it, I just want to acknowledge that what we went through was really hard. And the fact that we're still here is pretty incredible. Not only that we're still here, but that we're doing incredible ministry, that we're bringing new people into the fold, that we're doing baptisms and new members, that we're launching new ministries. That's incredible. And we are stronger people for it. It doesn't mean that we wanted to go through that. It doesn't mean that we made every single choice the best choice. We did what we could. But what it does mean is that the people who are here are here. And this is our church. And this is our people. And we belong together. And we're going to do great things together. And so that's part of... Um, Part of this whole conversation about um, finding out who we are, finding out our people that are, are stuck in, that are, are invested, that are ready and willing to be the church together, um, and that we can move forward and move forward with all the best parts of who we are. And I am excited about that. And so that's part of the reason, again, to get, get us on a good foot of what are some of the best things that we have going for us and what are some of the best resources within our tradition to help us in being a voice in Yankton for the love and grace of God, for being a voice in Yankton that you can belong here, to be a voice in Yankton for people who are hurting, people who are disillusioned, people who feel alone, that they can find community here, that they can find purpose and hope here, and they can find a place where they are welcomed as they are to be a part of what we're doing. Another area of a place that, that we've been talking a lot about lately is, you know, as we, as we kind of build back up as the church, we've been doing a lot of really good work in starting to build up the community of our church. One of the things that I think COVID helped us to realize is that um, for too many of us, we had one really strong connection in the church, uh, but we weren't really connected to each other. Some, some of you are. Some of you are incredibly and deeply connected to each other, but I think that is very much tied to whether or not you've been a part of a small group for any length of time. Um, but I think if, if um, what we've seen is if your main connection to the church is the pastor and you don't know the names of anybody sitting around you, when that pastor leaves, um, you've lost your connection to the church. And I would hate that. If your main connection to the church is you enjoy um, a specific kind of music and that music goes away, then you've lost your connection to the church. If your connection to the church, you know, is is one specific ministry or one specific thing. And if that were to go away, then you've lost that which has brought you to the church. And so one of the things that has been my hope and that we're going to continue to work on and to build together is strengthening our connections with each other so that, you know, that day very distant in the future, I hope and pray that I leave that I'm not your only connection. Now, I want to be connected to you. I am your pastor and I want you to feel safe and that you can talk to me and ask me questions and bring me whatever is on your mind, that I want that to be real and solid, that, that connection, but I don't want it to be your only connection to the church. I want you to get to know the people that are here 
the people that are going to be here, the people that are invested and who Yankton is their forever home and that this church is their forever home and, and to get involved in the things that are happening and not just one thing, but maybe many things so that you have all of these connections and so that one of, if one of them switches out, that's okay because that's going to happen but you'll still be connected in so many other ways. That is one of my primary things that I feel like I've been wanting to work on. And I'm so grateful for the many ways in which we've made movement on that. With our Sunday fellowship and coffee time, I've seen people really get to know each other. Um, we've had this Bible and Brews study that's been going, and there's been some really deep connections through that. Our men's night out, uh, our mom's night out is going to be coming back, and I'm really excited about that. Uh, just as a way to build fellowship and connection with each other, because one of the greatest gifts of the church, apart from God, is each other. Um, that you are not alone, that you have a community of people who can love and support you. But that begins with getting to know each other. Um, and so that's one area that, that I've really been focusing on. Another area that I want to focus on is going deeper in our faith. So uh, if, if we are primarily active in our faith and that we show up for worship, which is wonderful and great, and I hope that you keep doing that, but we haven't, if you haven't really dug in into service or study or things like that, then that's going to be the next challenge for you is how do I go deeper? How do I take that next step of faith? Um, and so that it's not just what is the church doing for me, but how am I taking advantage of what the church is offering and how do I give back? Um, and so we're going to be talking about that kind of stuff this year as well. And maybe you've never heard that before. Um, and so let's talk about it. Um, so all of these things, you know, are, are swirling around in my mind. Um, and it just goes back to, we are meant to be the church together. We have gifts from our tradition that can help us be the church together. I want to be clear to say that I don't believe that the United Methodist Church is perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but I do believe it's valuable. I think we can learn from our other faith traditions. Uh, I think there's a lot that others can offer, but I also really truly believe there's a lot that we can offer others. And we can't do that if we don't stand up and say, mm -hmm. I'm proud of who I am. I'm proud of the church that I belong to. It is a wonderful place. And we're doing incredible things through God's spirit working within us. And I'd like for you to be a part of that. And so I hope that this helps get a little bit clearer on where I'm at in my mind and to challenge maybe some of the negative things that you've been thinking or that have been told to you or those seeds of doubt that, um, that maybe have been sown in your heart. Um, we're a good church. We're a good bunch of people. I'm so proud to be here. I'm so proud that I get to serve you and that we get this opportunity to really dig in, to figure out what we're really going to be about. And I hope at the end of the day, what we're about is showing God's love. Help people to know how loved and seen that they are and that there's a place for them so they can have hope. Because we live in a world right now that doesn't have a lot of it. And I want us to be a church that, that welcomes all. From the most conservative to the most progressive, there should be a place for everyone here. So that's my dream. Would you like to come along with me? Until next time, God bless. We'll see you soon. Thank you for listening to this episode of What's Going On. We'd love to have you join us for worship here at the church on Sundays at 10 a.m. You can also find us online via our website at firstumcyankton.org 
or search for us on YouTube.